I think I've always listened to a lot of music because I, I grew up kind of listening to the chart show and pressing sort of pause and record on, on my ghetto blaster and, you know, I always sort of lived in a world of the songs that I was listening to, but I don't know when it started to feed into the paintings. I probably started, I don't know, like when you're a kid you start writing the lyrics from pop songs on your school diary and on your exercise book and stuff and you kind of start doodling around them and scribbling on them and things. So, so maybe they were the very first sort of times that I had words and pictures together. I think sometimes, you, you know, I get obsessed with songs because sometimes there's a lyric or just a feeling in the song that sort of sums up something that's happening in my life or an emotion that I'm feeling. So those things I get obsessed with and I latch onto and they're the things that end up in the work. And perhaps they're quite personal to me, what they actually mean and how they feel, and probably the other artist never intended it to be that. Well, I'd like to think that musicians understand or appreciate what I'm doing, because I think, I think the whole process is more like making music anyway, from the way I compose it to the way I perform the painting or whatever. They're, they're very, I find them like, more like songs, really, in, in terms of how they're composed and everything. And, um, I mean, I always try and... You know, a collection for me is like an album, and you get... I mean, in this new collection that I'm going to show, even the, the drawings are almost like the acoustic or a cappella tracks, and then you have these massive big production jobs, which are these gigantic paintings, you know, but I try and have a diversity. This is like the ballads and the real emotional ones and then the more rocky ones, and I suppose altogether they, they do have a theme and, and a style. And... <sighs> God, it's... It's so hard to remember what I've even been listening to because there's some things that I'll always listen to. Um, I remember about halfway through making the new body of work and I, I had so little energy and I was actually quite poorly and I just had nothing in me. And I remember watching Pink Floyd's The Wall and just seeing the intensity of the emotion, um, sort of when Pink's shaving his eyebrows off and the song and the lyrics and, and, and it just really kind of gave me a second wind halfway through, I think. So that was quite a significant piece this time. But a lot of, um, strangely enough, like Nirvana again, which is something that I turned my back on for at least five years or so. And now I'm sort of starting to see the significance in someone like Kurt Cobain. I think in particular for, for this body of work, you know, which is, you know, when you're a kid, you dream of accomplishing all this stuff. And I think this collection is very much about kind of what happens on the other <coughs> side. You know, what's it like when you're on the other side of the shop window and... What does it really feel like, and how sh how shallow is this stuff? And I think Kurt, at the end, you know, a lot of his songs actually really sort of personified a kind of an isolation and a loneliness and a dissatisfaction that he couldn't really fix. I think I think every kid dreams of being a rock star, don't they? But I mean, I could never sing, but I'm still obsessed with music. So I think that an artist can be a bit like that. I mean, we, you deal with the same stuff. And I think actually a lot of the, the pop stars and rock stars now, you know, they're dealing with contemporary culture. I mean, if you even think of Dizzy Rascal or something, it's, it's right up to the minute stuff about what's actually going on. So, you know, that's kind of what I do in my work. I, I identify much more with them than, than what a lot of the visual artists are doing. Yeah. I, don't, I think like MTV when it started was like such a groundbreaking thing all the graphics and the eye dents and actually it's very anarchistic wasn't it it was like pretty punk in a way like the, a station that only played music videos you know and i think that's kind of evolved you know because mtv now they've got a whole number of stations of course but the main mtv it's it's very commercial and it's it's not what it used to be and then you kind of have the alternative mtv mtv2 and things like that and you often see quite amazing videos. Because, I mean, obviously, like, a lot of the uh, music video directors, I mean, they're visual artists. I mean, they're, they're amazing pieces of video work. And it's an amazing way for a lot of people to see astonishing images, you know, moving image, that, for me, is above and beyond normal television. Because it's not purely entertainment, actually. It's proper moving, moving visual art. Bleeding off the edge of the canvas, you feel that there's more than what you're looking at. I mean... 
I hope that. that I mean, because there's always that narrative, you know, there's always, in each of the paintings, I hope there's like a, more of a story. So I suppose there could be, you know, like a storyboard or a music video or something. You know, you know what I mean?